to stay out of trouble, huh? Yeah. How long are you going to be? Oh, no, tell me about an hour. Well, I'll see you over Thursday. Good night. Here, ma'am, let me help you with this. Hello. You're the hotel porter. No, ma'am, I, I was just passing by. Oh, no matter. After eight hours dancing in that convenience, your proper sight for sore. Eyes. I'm ever so grateful. Oh, my pleasure, ma'am. Hope you enjoy your stay in Virginia City. Oh, right. Oh, oh before you pop off, you know where I might go get a boy to assist me? Father with his luggage? Oh, here, I'll help him. Here. Oh. Here. Oh. Thank you. Yes. Oh, here we go. Uh, it's that last piece in the baggage book that needs your kind attention, if you'll be good enough. Yes, sir. I'll be glad to. <laughs> Look out. Here now, here. Didn't know I'd say that contained irreplaceable paraphernalia. Oh, I say, old boy, would you carry it into the hostelry, careful like? That's a good chap. What kind of company are you with, Mr. Malcolm? I'm a daughter, the beautiful Princess Natasha. Princess? Exactly. Royal blood. Her mum was a princess, too. Indian, you know. Indian? What tribe? Hindu. The inscrutable East and all that, you know. That is why our lodgings must be in the rear. Not only for privacy, but in order to face Mecca. <laughs> Oh, oh, no. No, just a second. Uh, can't trust my paraphernalia to the careless help around here, old tiger. So if you'll just hang on to that for a minute, then you can ease it right down into our suite. Uh, top floor. Back. Uh, excuse me. Oh, thank you. Come on, Doc. Ooh. That's the top floor. Must be smashing you. It's going to be a smashing climb, I can tell you that. It's, uh, the heaviest that blame paraffin. Paraffin. What you would call it, I already didn't oh, You Yanks really like pulling a person's leg, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Set that down there, would you? Gently now, gently. That's it, easy. Gentle, gently. Right. Stout fellow, very stout fellow, isn't he, daughter? Quite. Well, if uh, if you folks don't mind, I'll I'll be running along. Ta-ta. Hey, it's a rabbit. Don't worry, I, I got him. I got him right here under the hat. He's safe. Malcolm the Magnificent, at your service, sir. Oh, I'll be doggone. Wait till I tell old Joe and Hobbs and I met a real professional trickster right in life. 
Oh, well, uh, I would much prefer the title of um, illusionist or uh, prestidigitator, but uh, feel free to impress your friends if you like. After all, word of mouth never hurts, does it? Now, remember, on the stage of the Bucket of Blood next Saturday night only. And now, Princess, if you'll see the lad out while I unpack. Oh, and for his invaluable assistance, arrange for him to see our performance. Oh, that would be mighty nice of you. I, I'll look forward to seeing you do some of them, some of them tricks, and I'll... Be looking forward to seeing you again, too, uh, Princess. Jan. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Keep her warm and ram one of those down her throat if she gets restless. We know she's good and healthy or she couldn't have come through the mall and she took. Yeah. That's got to be a pretty hungry mountain lion to try to chew fillets off of anything as tough as Alice. Yeah. You know, I hate to say anything bad about any animal drums up as much business as that lion has, but uh, yours is the third milk cow he's grabbed at the last three weeks. He got off of the other two. Maybe Paul will get him. <laughs> Take it easy, Doc. Yeah. Uh, you the doctor? Hmm. Oh, uh, it all depends where you hurt, ma'am. Now, Joe, don't start prescribing without a license. <laughs> I'm Doc Dunkett, little lady. What was it that you was after? After getting yourself some copper liniment. Saw your shingle and came up straight away. We got all kinds of liniment. What's the ailment? Uh, stiff legs, I'd call it. Four or hind extremity. These aching extremities right here. Well. Horse of a different color. Horse? Say, what kind of doctor are you? Horse. And don't don't spook, little lady. The, the doc here is a friend of man or beast. Let's uh, let's take a look at that aching extremity. It, it's all right, little lady. Just put your leg up there. I'll He's a wonderful doctor. Try. Here we go. Oh. I'd say that limb was as sound as a dollar. I think you both the tuppence for your thoughts. You say it feels stiff? And sore and cramped like. Right here. Sore and cramped. Well, what you need some liniment. It's uh... Oh, here, you uh, you can get this at the uh, pharmacy or the livery stable. Just tell them the doc sent you. Thank here. you. How much do I Oh, no charge. It's my pleasure. Oh, which way is the apothecary's? Hmm? Oh. Um, the druggists. Oh, the druggists. I'll, I'll, I'll walk you down there. It'd be my pleasure. Good for you. Stretch your legs. Oh. Hey, with the, uh, the miners chase that mountain lion. That cat just doubled right back at them and killed their milk cow. Well? Well, what, Paul? Well, I thought you boys would join me in a mountain lion hunt after supper. Hmm? Well, a mountain lion hunt? Oh, I, I wish you would have asked me a little bit earlier, Pa. I, I've got a date to meet somebody in town. So have I. Yeah, see, I I told this, uh, this girl that I was going to see her after supper. <laughs> you're, you're giving up a mountain lion hunt to, to see a girl? Hey, she must be quite a girl. I'd like to meet her. No, you wouldn't either. She ain't your style. Oh, really? Well, what, what's, what style is she? Well, she's got class. I mean, she's nice and refined and proper-like. <laughs> well, it takes all kinds. <laughs> Mine's hotter than a firecracker. Hey, can I have the surrey tonight? Hey, wait a minute. I was going to use the surrey tonight. Yeah, well, you should have asked for it a little bit earlier, because I'm going to use the surrey tonight. Well, couldn't you both use the surrey? Oh, Paul, ain't no way. I mean, my girlfriend would probably be embarrassed to be seen with anything Joe would go with. Oh, really? Well, I think it would probably be the other way around. All right, all right, I'll flip you for it. I got a better idea. I'll Indian hand wrestle you for it. <laughs> all right, come on. Boys, boys, boys. 
And for frontier accommodations, I claim this is top drawer. And I claim I've slept in top drawers that was roomier. I'd be more stretchy spicier than inside that suffering trunk. Stop growling and take your lungs like a sport. Who? Cool. Listen to Goody Two Shoes. Wasn't it uh, that did the growling in the trunk oh, all the way from New Orleans to Panama? Oh, I'm always crazy to storm at sea. I can't help it. I always lose it. I can't help it. I always lose it. Shut up. Now listen, Jan. Now listen, Janice. It's quite true, your sister is always queasy when she's in the truck during the storm at sea. Well, I'm always bruised when some dull clod drops the flaming trunk off the dear. top of a stagecoach yes. with me inside. I know, dear, but... I will not ride in that All right, again. darling. Unless you promise it'll right. be handled with care. I promise. Still and all, the temporary hardships have always been rewarding, haven't they? And Virginia City looks like a real piece of cake from here. Yes, from here. I'll size it up close and tonight when I steps out for the local chap I met this afternoon. Not off you don't. Oh, I had the morning in the trunk and I'll have the girls. evening on the town. Girls. Amy, that's the not town. fair. Girls, I'll be girls, fair. girls, girls, girls. You know, you can't possibly both go out tonight. Why not decide ladylike? First ace wins. Why don't we just wrestle? No. First fall wins Virginia no, City. Girls, of course, no, girls, you are you ready for go. Mr. Cartwright, as far as I know, the Malcolms are in. Both Magnificent and his daughter. Very good. Uh, listen, by the way, where can I get some flowers like that? Across the street, at The Undertaker's. Thanks. The Undertaker's? Yes. Uh, business has been slow, poor fellow. He, he's overstocked. Decided, so let's hear no more, shall we? Whichever girl is called upon first tonight, that's the one what slips out. Excuse me, Father, but you'd better work on that trick. This time you did it so well, I couldn't see how you did it. Yes, you're right. Takes practice to become clumsy at a trade. Could that be? I thought you'd arrange for him never to contact us openly. Wasn't his knock three quicks, then two slows? Who's there? It's me. Uh, from this afternoon. Don't believe I caught the name. Cartwright. The gentleman would help fetch me luggage? No, the gentleman would help stretch your legs. Hello. Why couldn't I have had sons? Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the bucket of blood, but I don't think you'd like it. Why not? Sounds like a smashing spot. Where is it? Well, there's a family entrance right up at the lobby, but I'll tell you, it is not family entertainment. It's just not for you. Right off the lobby now? Thoughtful. getting these restrainers. They're exactly like those the local sheriff uses. With one exception. We've got the key to these. <laughs> Just hope we do better here than we did on that riverboat. Hello? It's me, Mr. Malcolm. Is, is your daughter the princess in? Who'd you say it was, old tiger? No, sir. Old horse. Did you order an old horse? I'm the one that brought your trunk up, remember? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Um, I thought we'd thank you. Oh, yes, sir, you did, but I thought maybe I'd show Miss Jen around. That is, if she ain't tied up. I say, old sport, would you mind waiting down in the lobby for half a mile? Then we make it a big mistake. How's that? Using that haunch of venison for bait. The only thing that old lion has tackled lately is milk cow. I'm not gonna use milk cow for bait. I didn't say we should. I only say we ain't getting anywhere this way. And I'll just bet you a box of shells that that old lion ain't within 10 mile of here. I'll take that bet. What bet?
<laughs> Mr. Cartwright? No. I'm sorry about that. But what? A Princess Natasha, Jan, locked into one of those situations she couldn't possibly wriggle out of. You understand? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, she asked if you would uh, present yourself on the morrow instead. In the meantime, I would uh, like to buy the bitters. The bitters? Uh, the innkeeper gave me to understand there was a convenient pub. Uh, <laughs> shall we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> The decor looks to me a little Indian. I was there during one of the uprisings. They poisoned all the wells. Give myself a pretty tough shot, huh? Well, uh, knowing nothing whatsoever about billiards, it still seems to me that if you put a little English on the, the cue ball, the eight ball would go into the corner pocket and the, the 12 ball would go into the, the side pocket and the, um, the cue ball would go all the way around the table and sink the 14 for good measure. Uh, Jan, it's not that easy. Yeah. See, the, the 12 ball is frozen against the cushion, the 8 ball is frozen on the 12 Come ball. Come on, play now and explain later. Unless, of course, you want the girl to take that shot for you. Very funny. All right. Let's see if you're as free with your money as you are with your tongue, Mr. Sore Loser. You want to bet your gent can make that shot? I want to wager a bob. Even I can make it. I don't bet with no woman. Then how about betting with me? Look, Rankin, I already paid you for my lesson in poker. But you can't stack pool balls like you deal bottom cards. Uh, uh, fellas, it's my shot. I say you're a loser in anything you try, friend. And if you claim the little lady can't put the eight ball in the corner pocket, I'll just bet you 50 silver eagles she can do it. You got yourself a bet, Rankin. Hey, now, wait a minute. Yes. Anybody else? Let my gentleman friend have some of that bet. Excuse me. Uh, Jan, I really... Would you... You want ten of this? Twenty. Honey, that was a heck of a shot. Gentlemen, uh, pay me. Two more bitters here, please. What? Oh, you know, I... No more until they hear the clink, clink, clink. You haven't paid for the first round yet. Bernie, I'll get them and I'll get the next one, too. I wouldn't hear of it. These drinks have been paid for. Are you trying to deadbeat me? Mr. Malcolm, I think... My poor misguided friend. Don't you remember I laid the money on the bar and you tucked it in your nose? You were saying? I was saying you owe me for the drinks. What's this? Well, that's half a crown, British coin of the realm. It's no good here. Pay to that. That's, that's all right, Mr. Malcolm. Bernie, I'll get them. And much more, too. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, if you insist. <laughs> Thank you. I'll have the same. <laughs> Oh, really? What'd you and your girlfriend do for fun? Go look at a statue of General Bernie Epstein, or did you go all out and visit the old Indian burial ground? I minded my own business, little brother. Just like I'm going to do today when I've got the surrey. Fine, but if you're going to court that little lady in broad daylight, if I were you, I'd take her to Wishing Crick. At least that way she can wish for something exciting to happen. Go ahead, Paul. Right. You just get into? No, I uh, I'm just leaving. Oh, I could do something. Did you uh, get that big cat? Hmm. Kept in it all night. Never saw it. Oh, this is so. Uh, old Staley coming in. Said that cat got one of his milk cows last night. The only way that cat gets around is like magic. Magic. Oh, uh, listen. If you'll excuse me, Paul, I've got to see somebody. I'll see you later. Well, how was your hunting, Joseph? It's fine. I guess you could say I came out ahead of my game. <laughs> How about some breakfast, huh? Yeah. Who is it? <clears throat> Mr. Cartwright. Cartwright? Joe. Janice, look at the door. Say, look, Stein, 
Jan, it's my caller. Didn't expect to see you so early, Mr. Ca Mr. Cartwright? Yes, ma'am. Your, uh, your pa told me that you were temporarily indisposed last night and that, that you'd see me on the morrow. And this is the morrow. And... Oh, yes. Well, caught me temporarily indisposed again, haven't you? Uh, <laughs> just about to pop in me bath, I was, as you can see. Yeah, I, you want me to wait down in the lobby, I reckon. Would you? I'll be down and off. I know, I know. Off a mo. <laughs> <sighs> That's the beatenest dang thing I ever did see. I reckon that must be the fastest half a mo anybody ever did scrub and tub in. Well, didn't want to waste a precious second. And he thought to where we might go. Oh, I've been giving it some serious thought, ma'am. Some real serious thought. You know, Virginia City is a pretty good-sized town. There's a lot of cultural things a lady like you ought to see, like maybe uh, General Bernie Epstein's statue, or the Indian burial ground, or, or maybe the Wishing Creek. Uh, smashing. Then Wishing Creek it'll be. No, Elsa, no. That's the right card. Now, look, if you insist on doing the trick correctly, you'll ruin everything. You know I wouldn't contact you if anyone was following me. Hello, Elsa. Where are your other two birds? Shh, keep your voice down. Janet is in there catching 40 winks, and Jan's seeing the sights with some local toff. I saw Janice last night. I know you did. I know you did. And I expect a cut of the boodle you made betting on her. Here, you can add it to this when you bet it all against me tomorrow night. You sure you can pull your trick off with the sheriff watching? <laughs> Suppose your hand is not quicker than the eye of the law. Confidence, dear old boy, confidence. It's in the bag. Or rather, shall we say, in the trunk. Well, here we are. Come on in. When we started out, you said a Wishing Creek. Yeah, well, we're going to Wishing Creek, but this is on the way. It won't take just a minute. You mentioned something about your father being here. Yeah, you, you like him too. Hey, Paul! Paul! Come on down there. Somebody owes you to meet. He's not here. No, he ain't. That's funny. He's out hunting mountain lion all night last night. Hey, and there was um, a Chinese cook, I believe. Yeah, Hop Sing. I'll get him. Hop Sing! Hey, Hop Sing! Hop Sing! He's not here either. Oh, hey, that's funny. But I'll get something to eat if you're hungry. No, thanks. And I don't want anything to drink either. All right, why don't, why don't you just make yourself? I, I think we'd better go to Wishing Creek. Yeah, we go. Let me get this rifle. I'll show you this rifle. You did say rifle. Yeah. What'd you think I said? Etchings. <laughs> I just want you to take a look at this. Here, you can hold it. Take a look at it. I'd rather you held it. This old engine that I got this off of claims he got it off an engine. See, there's his crest right there. That's his coat of arms. I say, that's fascinating. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd be interested. You being an Englishman at all. Well, I reckon we better be off to Wishing Creek. Is that all? Yes, ma'am. That's, that's it. There really aren't any etchings. No, I, I ain't got no etchings. Look, I, uh, <clears throat> I think we, uh, we better be on our way to Wishing Creek, don't you reckon? I reckon so. You all right? I'm beginning to wonder. Doggone it, 
Miss Jan, I just got to tell you one more time how sorry I am about you falling into the creek and losing your shoe and all. You should have put your arm around my waist to steady me when we were crossing those slippery rocks. Oh, ma'am, I couldn't do that. This is only our first date. Oh, that does make a difference. So I guess it could have happened to anyone. It wouldn't happen to just anybody. It wouldn't happen to my little brother, Joseph. He's a good-looking member of our family. Yes, I know. Achoo! Bless you. When did you see him? Ah, uh, uh, just last night. Oh. So you were out with him last night. Well, fat figures. They ain't nothing pretty ever misses them big brown eyes of his. You've got nice eyes too, horse. They're blue. Baby blue is my favorite color. Oh, sure enough. Uh-huh. Hey, I'll tell you what. Tomorrow, we'll do something really romantic. We'll go out to the engine barrel ground. They got skulls, bones, and everything. Sounds smashing. Good, come on. Ma'am, I'll see you tomorrow. Good day. done the same thing. Besides, I didn't figure she was your type. What do you know about her type? Nice, refined, delicate lady like that, soft. <laughs> soft? You gonna call that girl soft? <laughs> well, I can tell you this one, though. When I held her in my arms, she was as soft and limp as a diamond. Is that right? Well, how come when I held her in my arms, she had muscles as hard as sourdough biscuits? Well, sure, she was tensing up against you, but she melts for me. Oh, that's funny. Hey. Who are you talking about? Jan Malcolm, Paul. Uh -huh. You both caught in the same young lady? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we didn't know it at first, but we do now. She must be quite a young lady to keep you both in the spring. She's just wonderful, Paul. And besides that, she's out of town. She's from England, huh? Well, she's also from India. It's out of town. I'll tell you one thing about her. You handle a pool cue or a deck of cards like a riverboat gambler. Yeah, but she can, she can, she can play a harp and cameos, write poetry, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, she, she knows all the salty sea chanties that have ever been sung. And that she can quote the Bible, scripture, and verse. <laughs> She's the most talented person I ever heard of. Yeah, well, yeah, she ought to be. You know, her father's a magician. A magician? Yeah, the, uh, what's that? Magnificent Malcolm. Of course, I heard there was an illusion show in town this week. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tonight, Paul, and I've been invited as her guest. What? I have been invited as her guest. Oh, really? Oh, well, I have been invited as her guest. What? I said I have been invited as her guest. Ooh, this young lady is going to be very busy tonight. Keep sewing, boys. Keep sewing. Don't you think that out of a town of several thousand pigeons, my bright daughters could pick out a pair that wasn't brothers? Oh. Listen, Jan and I pick the Cartwright boys like apples pick a farmer. Oh, well, small moment. What those blokes don't know can't hurt us. As a matter of fact, their rivalry might help. Yes, that's right. Love may be blind, but it's always positive. Yes, and after the Cartwrights certify the miraculous teleportation... All right, Molly, oh. be into the trunk, come on. No. Oh, well, I don't muck about, Molly, we get inside. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> oh, uh, come oh. in, come in, old chap. Uh, howdy, Miss Malcolm. Howdy, Miss Jen. It's, it's me again. Yes, of course. Uh, recognized you right off. I, uh, I brought you a little replacement for that item you lost this morning. Really? Yeah. How considerate. What was it I lost again? Uh, your left boot. Size four and a half AAA. 
Four and a half, triple A. <laughs> it's exact size. I knew that because you left the bill of sale there with the bootmaker when you bought them. Eat with your trammel. Yeah. Well, I, no, no, I... You just slip right into it. That's right, Jan. Easy to hold. Dainty little foot, a helping hand. <laughs> oh. Oh. Don't come, princess. If I didn't know you was Cinderella, I'd swear you was one of the evil step sisters. <laughs> there. Now, how does that feel? That's yeah. not. Thank you. Very snug. Yeah, well, that's the way it's supposed to be. Come on, try it. Here. Walk on. There you go. Comfortable? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I got to get over to the barbershop and get ready for your performance tonight. <laughs> Jolly good show. Oh, I bet it is. I'm really looking forward to getting really food. Uh, yes. <laughs> we'll try our best. <laughs> yeah. Here, let me show you exactly where your table will be. Ta-ta. Oh, yes, ma'am, and, uh, and ta-ta to you, too. Jan! Can you take your boots off me, I can feet? I was just passing by. I thought I'd stop over and say hello. Hey, let me uh, uh, help you on with that boot. Oh, uh, don't trouble yourself. Oh, don't I'll be silly. No manage. trouble at all. Yeah, sit right down there, huh? Hey, that's kind of cute. Let me have your foot. Have this on in a jiffy on that beautiful little foot of yours. <laughs> they kind of... They really make them tight, don't they? Did you hear that? Ben. Dead center? Yeah. I'll let those milk cows out the pasture. Hurry it up, ducks. I'm hurrying, Dad. I'm hurrying. All right. I wish you'd hurry up and get me out of here. Virginia City is proud to welcome the world's most renowned necromancer, doctor of oriental occultism and acme of abracadabra, the magnificent Malcolm. Hey! Ladies and gentlemen, what as they say in the mysterious East, Sim Salah Bim. Before I begin my phantasmagoria of incomprehensible feats, I will materialize from the thin atmosphere my magical walking stick. Are you ready? A one, a two, a three. <laughs> And now I would like to introduce my assistant, the poultry tuntiness, Princess Natasha! <laughs> What she's gonna do, recite poetry or play the harp? Oh, please, please, ladies and gents, your kind indulgence, I beg of you. I will now attempt to prove the impossible. And not only when I cut this ordinary piece of cord into two halves, I will miraculously restore them into one again. Are you ready? Abracadabra. <laughs> I 
use a cone made from an ordinary newspaper and a pitcher filled to the brim with wholesome milk. Behold! illusion for which I was awarded these medals, after flabbergasting the crowned heads of Europe, I will, without the aid of moisture or fertilisation, cause this beautiful example of nature's handiwork to grow 15 feet before your very eyes on the count of three. Are you ready? One! <laughs> And gentlemen, I will prove to you that the hand is quicker than the eye with this ordinary pack of playing cards and this small but deadly weapon. Are you ready? Oh. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed... <laughs> No danger to human life or limb. Ball! Ball! Please, please, I must have your undivided attention if I am to be successful with this next experiment. And we must ask for our money back if you ain't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cotton, please. The most difficult part of this feat is finding an honest man who will guarantee its authenticity. I suggest to you that here are two young men of impeccable honesty, Hoss and Joe Cartwright. <laughs> Sheriff to join these two men on the stage. Oh. And now our two volunteers will tie the Princess Natasha, gentlemen, if you will pay attention. They will tie the Princess Natasha so that she is absolutely immovable. Tie her securely, lads. Um, Splendid, splendid. Mm -hmm. And now, Sheriff, if you please, use your handcuffs to lock the princess's royal wrists in the front of her. You are princess, it won't hurt much. And now, place the captive princess into cabinet number one. I thank you. <coughs> uh, lower huh? And now, my lad. If you will place this black hood over her precious head. I thank you. Very, very good. Now we will close the cabinet number one, chain it and padlock it securely. Now that is it. Uh, splendid, uh, securely now. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, my three incorruptible witnesses will accompany me to the opposite side of the stage and to cabinet number two. I thank you, gentlemen. And now, kind friends, I must insist upon a deathly hush, for what I am about to do not only flies in the face of logic, it also defies the laws of gravity, inertia, and metabolism. Are you ready? On the count of three, I am going to teleport our captive princess, Natasha, from cabinet number one, across the stage, into an inside cabinet number two. No, you can't do it. Whom says I can't? I do. And this $500. Mr. Rankin, this is not a riverboat. And this charlatan is no magician. I'll bet $500 he can't do what he says he can do with all you good people watching. All right, chum. You've stung me professional honor. You've got a bet. And anyone else of your doubting Thomas friends who wants to wager, I will cover all bets. And our hotel manager will pass amongst you, collecting the money while our good sheriff keeps a tally. So 
beings. Sim Salabu, Alakazu, Alakazam, Sim Salabam. Princess, have you re-materialized? Yes, I have. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, if you will. Gentlemen, if you will lower the princess once again. Oh, wait a minute. How do we know it's the same girl? Yeah. Yeah. Take the little. Uh, uh, Mr. Cartwright, if you please. <laughs> and now, gentlemen, if you will lower our princess Natasha back into cabinet number two, replace the hood. <laughs> And now, please close once more cabinet number two. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I will teleport our captive princess from cabinet number two back into cabinet number one. Sim Salabam! Sim Salabu! Sheriff, if you will be so kind as to release cabinet number one, the key. Ah, oh, thank you. Gentlemen, if you will. Hi, uh, thank you. Uh, take off her hood. I ain't gonna believe it until I see it with my own eyes. Gentlemen, if you please. Hey, you got Thank you. I appreciate that. Malcolm. Yes, Mr. Cartwright? Your daughter lost an earring. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. It was never my intention to keep your money. I simply wanted to prove to you the folly of betting against a professional trickster. And now, Sheriff, if you will. I thank you. Get the rope off. I thank you. Rankin, you're going to find that Arizona is a much healthier climate for your throat. My throat hasn't given me any trouble. You just come back to Virginia City again, will you? And as for you, Mr. Malcolm, make sure that our Nevada sun never sets on your part of the British Empire again. Exactly how far is Carlson City? Never mind. <laughs> I kind of hate to say goodbye. Yeah, but I, I reckon we got to. Yeah. Lots of luck. Yeah. Been fun knowing you. Yeah, I, I get yours. Ta-ta! 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 
Ta-ta! Ta-ta! Ta-ta! Ta Come on, girls! Yeah, we'll see ya. Let's go get a beer. Yeah, why not? Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul, how's it going? How fine they said you'd be in here. How'd the land hunt go? Oh, good, we got him. Did you? How big was he? 110 marks. Oh, here's a big one. Uh, Tell me, I've been, uh, been thinking about what, uh, what's been happening between you two. It's been sort of on my mind, you know, that, uh, that gal you were both sparking, what, uh... You mean, uh, Malcolm the Magnificent's daughter? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> gal who can shoot pool and quote the Bible and play the harp and sing sea shanty. Why, it's not somebody you forget in an awful hurry. Well, uh, as it turns out, Paul, she wasn't just a she. Oh, well, what he's trying to say is that she couldn't do all the things we thought she could do. Oh. Yeah, you know how she acted like two opposite gals? Because she was two opposite gals. <laughs> yeah, twins. Twins? Twins. <laughs> really put one over on us, huh? That's why it's so confusing. <laughs> twins! <laughs> no one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, that, that's about the whole story, I want you to finish my beer. <laughs> uh, pardon me, ma'am. My, uh, my name is Joe Cartwright. I...